I'm about to start brewing a bunch of Brufios. I'm Professor Vokas, and this is Harry Potter Wizard Unite. So yesterday, before I left Waverly Place here, I actually went to both these greenhouses and did try the greenhouse charm. But after that, I actually planted toadstool in both of them and maxed out the energy. So I should have 18 toadstool to collect. And you can see right now there's a ton around me. So I'm going to collect all this toadstool. Let's start right now. Nice. I'm going to collect all this toadstool and then let's talk about field charms. It took me a second, but I did find all 18. So yeah, I planted in both those greenhouses. Max both, so you get nine out of each if you throw 50 energy in. I was in an area here where I can get energy, so I was like, let me just throw 50 in each and then I'll max it out. I knew I was coming back tonight to do this guide to field traces, which is what we are gonna get on in a second, but I was out of Leaping Toadstool, so you can see I've got 18 to work with, which would be nine Barufios, which is good because I did skill up a little in Barufios because I'm still trying to level my way to 60. So experience is good to come by. Barufios, I definitely can take the extra experience. For this guide to field charms, I've kind of broken it down into two phases. The first phase is going to be a practical phase where I'm out here, I'm by inns, I have some greenhouses and uh, certainly enough traces to work with so that I can show you a practical use of each of the charms. I can show you the trace charm, I can show you the inn charm, and I can show you the greenhouse charm and Hopefully, if no bugs happen, then we'll go ahead and get to see how they work, like what happens and what you should be looking for when you do them. The second part of the guide, we're gonna go ahead and go back home and we're gonna talk a lot more in depth about each of them and how the skill tree relates to them and what it does for you, how it affects how the charms work. So to start things off, let's go with some general knowledge about the field charms themselves. If I look at my field charms, which on the screen right now in the lower right, I can click on that uh, icon. It's got three things. A lot of times it's blinking at you, even when you can't use them because it wants you to go over there. But in this case, mine are all grayed out. I used them yesterday. They do not automatically recharge. The primary way that you can recharge them, so this is kind of tip one. The primary way that you recharge them is in your daily tasks, and I haven't collected this yet because I wanted to point to it, the walk 0.25 kilometers, if you see collect and it has a gift next to it, well, I'm gonna hit that gift. And right there, you get 250 experience, nothing special there. And then next to that, it has each of the charms listed and it says plus one. That is gonna give you plus one charge on each of those. So each day you have definitely, as long as you can walk 0.25 kilometers, you can get this reward and recharge each of them so you get one cast of them, which is great. And since right now I have no charges at all, well, let me actually back out because I do want to show you one thing. If you look at mine, all of mine at the bottom say zero out of one, zero out of one, zero out of one. And actually let me, it's right when you kick in right there, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and they're red. I have zero charges out of one maximum. In the skill tree, and we'll talk about this in the second phase of this guide, in the skill tree, you can actually make it so you have a uh, space for two charges. Now, if I already had charges in these and I collected that daily, it wouldn't give me another charge because I would already be full. So that's why you should not collect it until you're ready. So I am ready. We're gonna go in and collect it. So I'm gonna collect that. Nice, I get one of each of those and I get 250 experience, which is good because I'm gonna need to cast each of them at least once and hope that they don't mess up. There are other ways to get charges back from your field charms, but we'll talk about that back home when I'm going a little more in depth about each one. And I'll talk about how each one can get a charge back. It's using the skill tree though. Let's go ahead and get into the charms themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the trace charm, mainly because the trace charm, I only get to use it once a day. It is going to take a trace and then produce more traces. And you should be looking for higher threat traces. And right now I see a, a severe threat at least. So if I do it on the severe threat, theoretically it should give me more high level threat items. Generally not that one, although Reddit reports people have said that they've gotten the exact same foundable three more times or four more times. We're going to talk about how many more times you would get it. Again, that's in the skill tree. Right now we're just kind of doing a practical test. You know what? 
I still have it, and a Death Eater just came up. I would rather hit that Death Eater for sure. Yes, I did hit it. And look, it actually gave me more Death Eaters. Now, here's the thing. I see the original. It's off on the right of my screen, and I see a couple extras. I am going to hit the extras first, and let's talk about why I'm doing that. People have reported that when you hit the original, when you get rid of it, that they come back and all their other ones are gone. Sometimes restarting the game helps. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes all those extras you just got, and I got two because that's where I am on the skill tree, and we'll talk about that later. But I'm going to go after the copies first, and then I'm going to come back. So there you go. Eight. I got to love eight. And if, look, I just came back, and I only see one. I only see one right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it anyway. My other one has disappeared at the moment. Let me get this one. Nice. I don't know if you just saw that. It gave me a fragment, then it gave me another fragment. I actually got two fragments out of one Death Eater. That is something else that can happen with traces. When we talk more in depth about traces, I will talk about how you would have more fragments from those traces. Exactly what nodes on the skill tree. Now, interestingly enough, now we're on this screen and it says 9 out of 10. So I'm going to go ahead and back out. I'm going to see, first of all, did, is the other one going to reappear? Did I walk away from it? That's possible. I don't think so though. So right now I produced two of them. I was able to get one of them and then the other one disappeared and then I got the original. So I didn't miss out on one, but let's go to the registry and let's see if I go to oddities. Did that Death Eater give it to me? Do I have 10 out of 10? No, I have nine out of 10. So that screen actually said I got an extra fragment, but you can see here I did not. There are some bugs going on, I know, with the trace charm. This one of them is that those traces disappear on you. And now you can see it actually said I got a 10th fragment, but then it took it back away. So it is a work in progress. I know they're going to be adjusting some of these things. So let's move on to the in charm. So in charm and greenhouse charm have two kind of aspects to them. One, you just kind of need to know right away, and then the second one you can kind of look for. So if you look right now, there's no energy on the ground, and I'm right next to this in. So I'm gonna pick this in, actually, that's right in the middle of my screen right now. So I'm gonna go to my charms, I'm gonna go to the in charm, and I'm gonna drag it to that in. First thing I can do, it's sparkling, I can go into the in, and it should have a countdown timer. Where's my countdown timer? I had to exit and go back in. There's my countdown timer, 43, 42, 41. So right now, it's going to give me a little more energy just for casting this charm on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect my energy. It should give me one more. So that would normally be three, but it gave me four spell energy and it's in the pink writing. So that's, you know it was working. Now at that point, other people can actually come in and do the same thing, but they only have 22 seconds to do this. In addition, once you do that, I did that charm and now I just backed out. There was no energy on the ground before and now look, there's one energy and it's sparkling too. Let me try to get in on one. Can you see, there we go. You see that energy, it's got sparkles around it. That's telling you it came from that. That is telling me it came from that. So let me pick these up before they disappear. You'll also notice each of those only gave me one energy. They're not normal energy. Hey, but it's extra energy that just got produced. So, oh, there's one more. So that was four extra energy dispersed. Again, anybody can get those. So the last charm I want to show in a practical sense, at least out here, is the greenhouse charm. I am currently in range of that greenhouse. Let's hope it stays that way. I'm gonna drag over to that greenhouse. Oh, I walked out just as it happens. I'm gonna have trouble reaching that unless I move. So let's move over to that greenhouse. I made it over by the greenhouses. Although there's nowhere to sit, the lighting obviously is a lot better because I have a light right here in my face, which is perfect. So anyway, I'm at the greenhouses. So let's go to charms. And I'm gonna take that last charm and with one hand, I'm gonna put it on that greenhouse right next to me. Again, it starts sparkling again. I go into the greenhouse. Should be a countdown timer. Again, it's one minute, just like the inn. So I have one minute and everyone else has one minute to get in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the one next to my thumb because it's the easiest. And you can see Angel's Trumpet and Spell Energy. I got three and four, but it was that pink writing, which means I got one more of each. So when I back out now, so that's part one, get in and collect that, just like the spell energy. And now, if you look, I did clear the ingredients out, you can see there's a toadstool next to it. That is not a toadstool left over from my toadstools. This is a new toadstool, and you can actually see it sparkling just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect that. So I ended up with another leaping toadstool. Now right under me now is a packet of seeds. It's been there the whole time. So in this case, that greenhouse, 
not only gave me a little extra ingredients when I used it, it then produced some ingredients around it so people could collect those. In this case, it was a Leaping's Toadstool, which was a rarer ingredient. I have also gotten, I think yesterday I got scurvy grass, so certainly not as rare. Other people have reported getting snowdrop, bitterroot, which certainly I find those all the time on the ground, so it's not a guaranteed rare. I just happen to get lucky in that particular case. So, having cast all of them one time, if I go back to my charms, you can see they're all zero out of one, which means I need to wait till tomorrow's daily tasks, walk 0.25 kilometers, and then I'll get all of them back. Or, through the skill tree, there's another way to do it. But, we are definitely done with our practical test of the field charms out here, actually seeing them work. Let's go through each charm one at a time and really kind of do a deep dive on how you can improve each of them. Back at home, and I did want to let you know, um, right before I left, underneath the greenhouse that I'd cast the uh, charm on, there was actually one more toadstool. So I actually got two toadstools out of that. It was just hidden underneath, and when I walked around to the other side, it just kind of changed my angle. So I did actually get two toadstools out of that. So... Real world test of all three charms done. You saw how they worked, how you should wait, look outside the greenhouse, look outside the inn for that spell energy and those ingredients. And on the traces, you saw the one disappear on me, which again, that's something that's been happening. And a lot of people are just saying it's a bug right now on Reddit. So we'll see how that gets resolved. And when it does get resolved, I'll let you know what the result was. Moving on to the specifics of each trace and kind of how you can upgrade them using the skill tree and some other things about them that you will help you to understand how they work and how when you upgrade them, things are gonna work. So two words I'll be using a lot are efficacy, which you've seen in the skill tree if you've looked through, and proficiency. And they kind of mean different things based on the different charms. The first charm I would like to talk about is the Trace Charm, which right now has probably the most questions I've seen on Reddit as well as in Discord about. Trace Charm is learned at level five. On my screen right now, I'm in Calamity Essentials 1, and it's right at the top. It's on level five. It has a nine and three quarters, and then it actually has a little plus symbol, and it has a little burst coming out. It almost looks like maybe three wands, but I don't think that's what it is. So anyway, when I click on that, it just says Pario Vestigius. This is the charm. You do not have to learn it by using any resources. At level five, it just unlocks and you can use it. So if you're past level five, you've already got this. The first thing I want you to learn about the trace charm is that it's always going to be a square. That's gonna be the first thing as you're looking through skill trees, look for squares. And then if you look right here in the middle of my screen, there's a level eight, that's corner at the top. Level eight is, if I click on it, you can see it's no dozing. Right underneath that, and I'm gonna click on it, and now you can kind of see the big, the big square, and it says knowledge is power. It looks like a speech bubble, and it has pluses on it. Anytime you see a square with the speech bubble, anytime you see that, it means that that upgrade is gonna have something to do with a trace charm. So if you're looking to upgrade your trace charm, you can go through your skill trees and you don't have to click on anything. Look for the squares, those are the charms in general, and look for the one that has the speech bubble and then it'll have different things. In this case, knowledge is power, it says increase to trace rarity. So when you use this trace on other traces, it will produce more traces. The numbers we'll get into in a second, but this right here, and this is the only one like this in the whole skill tree, all the skill trees, it just increases the rarity so that at least you're getting higher threat foundables. Anyway, that one is, you do have to pay for that one. It's super cheap though. I would suggest definitely getting this. So when you use the trace charm, it ups your rarity of those traces. If you look on the same screen here from the level eight and then down to where I just was in between on the left, and I'm gonna click on it, is this constructive criticism, which again, it's a square. You see the speech bubble and it actually has the arrow pointing up and kind of like on stacked pieces of paper or squares. Anytime you see that, it's gonna increase the number of times you can cast that. And it doesn't mean it's gonna give you those charges. What it means is it's gonna give you one more slot of it. So when we talked about my screen, my charm saying zero out of one, so if I gained a charge, it just filled in that one slot. But if I gained another one, I don't have room for it, so I get nothing. 
In this case, this would open it up, so it'd be, I would have zero out of two. And if I gained it one day, I gained it, it became one out of two, so I have one charge out of the two maximum I can hold. If I didn't use it that day, and the next day I walked another 0.25 kilometers, it means that it would add, and now I would have two charges of it that I could use. There is a cooldown in between, and there's a lot of debate on what the cooldown is on both the trace, the inn, and the greenhouse. So for right now, just know that you'll be able to cast it, and you're gonna have to wait a little bit before you can cast another one. Both of those that I just showed you, the knowledge is power and the one that gives you one more trace. And by the way, you can see I haven't upgraded this because it takes 12 restricted section books and I haven't even finished my profession yet. I'm down to one restricted section book at the moment. And then it's 13 field guides and one ministry manual. That's no problem. It's those 12 restricted section books. But both of those are unlocked at the level eight node. And by level eight node, I mean this, this group right here, no dozing. Once you get that level eight, it unlocks that, which means now you can start working your way down these trees. And I'm gonna keep referring to nodes in this guide, and it's really referring to kind of the node that the level it gets unlocked and how you can build. It's an easy way to search for things in the trees because there are a lot of things. I've moved down to Calamity Essentials 2, and I'm down on the level 19 node. And on that node, as I go down and to the left some, you can see, I, I'm, again, I'm looking for that square, and I'm looking for that speech bubble. That's how I can identify it's going to be something to do with the trace charm specifically. So once I click on that, this is the first time we're gonna see this word efficacy. This, again, this upgrade takes 18 restricted section books, so I haven't upgraded it yet. And it says tr trace charm efficacy plus one. In the case of the trace charm, when it talks about efficacy and it talks about numbers plus one, it means you will then produce one more trace. You will produce one more trace than you would normally get. And if we look all the way back at the first thing, back at Paria Vestigius level five, the first thing you get says Paria Vestigius and then it says trace charm efficacy plus one. It's already giving you that plus one right then. Staying in Calamity Essentials 2, move down to the level 25 node. And on the level 25 node, again, this is something that unlocks automatically when I turn level 25. Some of the other ones actually require you to put resources in. This one, you turn level 25, you get the node. So if you look here, it says Lost and Foundables. Now it has a bunch of writing, you can read that. But the main thing is it says Trace Charm Proficiency plus one. In the case of proficiency, two things happen. Number one, you get more fragments. In this case, plus one. Normally you return a foundable and you get one fragment for that foundable. With the Lost and Foundables, if you use the Trace Charm, when you return those foundables that got produced by the Trace, you're going to get an extra fragment. Now, one thing to note, there are actually more of these type of power-ups throughout so that your fragment count can keep going up. And we'll talk about the maximum in just two seconds, but people have said there's a bug right now that no matter how much you've ranked it up, two fragments is the maximum you'll get from anything. So in other words, people have actually maxed this out or gotten where they should be getting, say, six fragments for returning a foundable, and they will return that foundable and they'll only get two fragments. And other people report that they normally get two fragments and they were getting two fragments. So right now, two fragments seems to be the cap and it's not supposed to be that way. Again, a bug that'll be fixed, but for right now, there's no reason necessarily to go any higher with your proficiency because it's only gonna give you two fragments anyway. The second and last thing I wanna talk about the trace charm in the skill tree is something that's a little harder to find. This one you do kinda of have to search out and know where it is. And it's called Studious Success. It is not actually that square we're looking for anymore. This one's a little weirder. I'm in the Essential Calamities 2 and it's under the level 32 node. Now, read the 32 node, let me kinda of put it at the, it's at the top of my screen right now. Now, if I go to the right diagonally and then straight down, right diagonally and straight down. There's a red dot on the right diagonal and then straight down from that, there's a picture of a treasure chest with a lock, meaning the lock just means that I haven't unlocked that node. But it has a treasure chest and a little arrow going up. That means it's gonna have something to do with getting treasure chests. Treasure trunks, excuse me. I keep saying treasure chest, it's actually a treasure trunk. You get these when you rank up on family experience, kind of any of your pages. And what this does, it says it allows treasure trunks the chance to reward you with a trace spell charm charge. I've been talking about doing that daily to get your three charges back, one for each. 
if you have learned this, which is 133 field guides and 46 ministry manuals, but to get to it, you actually have to use uh, other books. So that's why I haven't unlocked it yet. What it means is whenever you do rank up a family experience registry page and you get that treasure trunk that you normally would get, you have a chance that it will actually give you a trace charm charge back if you have room for it. Again, if you don't have room for it, it's not gonna do you any good. You would actually have to have a, a maximum number that's higher than what your current amount is. Like for me right now, I'm zero out of one, so I could open up trunks and I might have the chance for it to actually give me a charge back. People so far have reported opening 20 trunks, having 20 trunks open and then not getting a charge. People have speculated and or actually said they think it's one out of 50. There's a one in 50 chance. So even though you might get this, it's not a hugely reliable way to get that charge back to your trace charm. So this is called Studious Success and it's under the level 32 node. So to get to that, you just need to be level 32, go to this node. You would have to first unlock Invaluable Help, which is 122 field guides and 41 ministry manuals, and then unlock this for 133 field guides and 46 ministry manuals. And that just gives you a small chance that when you get those trunks on family XP rank ups, that you would actually get that trace charm back. So not a hugely reliable way. We'll see what the actual odds are probably in the coming weeks as data comes in. So the last thing I wanna talk about the trace charm is kind of where it maxes out because this is kind of known from the charts themselves. You can max this out at eight traces, meaning you go to all those nodes and you keep upping the efficacy, which increases the number of traces. And then your proficiency, you can get up to nine fragments, meaning each time you use the trace charm, it should produce eight traces, and each of those traces should give you nine fragments. Now, if you're getting high threat foundables that way, it's a great way to finish out your registry. The problem we've talked about is that it's not giving nine fragments right now, it's giving two. No matter how many you're supposed to get, it's only giving two. So when they fix that, it should be fantastic. It's a great way to fill out your registry, as well as gain a lot of family experience. So that'll be something to look forward to. Moving on to the in charm, we're gonna go to Calamity Essentials 1 again, and we're gonna look at level seven. Level seven, again, and there's going to be a square and it has a picture of an in and it has lightning bolts coming out which is energy really is what that's supposed to represent so again anywhere on the skill tree you see the square with the in and i'm going to click on this you can see it up top there it has a square and it has that picture of the in anywhere you see that it means it's an upgrade for the in charm as for the pronunciation of this particular word i think it's a made-up word is tribwomness tribwomness that's what i'm going to go with Anyway, you can see it gives you the M charm, so it allows you to actually use the M charm, and it's in charm efficacy. So here's efficacy for the in charm. In this particular case, it means the amount of energy that's going to spawn outside. And when I say energy that's gonna spawn outside, I mean once you back out of the inn, and you saw me do this earlier, is I backed out and there was energy on the ground. The higher your efficacy, the more is going to be on the ground. So as you're trying to rank this up in your skill trees, anywhere you see that's gonna up your efficacy, it means you're gonna get more energy on the ground when you cast this charm. I'm at the level 12 node in Calamity Essentials 1 still, and right to the right of it, you can see there's a square with an in, and it has a, another square inside with the arrow pointing up. If I click on it, you can see Flit Wickery, In Charm Spell Cast Increase. This again increases the maximum number of charges you can hold of the In Charm. Again, I'm zero of one right now. I can hold one. So if I ever managed to get one and tried to get another one, I can't hold it. I don't have space for it. This allows me to have two spaces for it. This can also get up to four. All of the charms right now, you can get them up to four. They can hold four charges. So for four days straight, you could not use it and just keep gaining charges and have four kind of banked. So again, going down the skill tree, anytime you see the square with the in, with the little square inside with the arrow up, not only do you know that's an in charm increase, you know it's actually going to increase your maximum charges you can hold. Jumping up to Calamity Essentials 2, but the very first node, which is level 15, you get this, which again, you don't have to actually buy this with resources. Just turning level 15 unlocks this, a feast for all, which again, you can see it's the square and it has the in picture and it has energy coming out of it. 
Feast for All says it gives you plus one in charm proficiency. So now we have that word proficiency again. How does it pertain to inns? If you look actually at the last line of the um, text box, it says this knowledge improves the effects of the in charm, maximizing the spell energy attainable by diners at inns. Meaning when you're in the inn and you saw me do this earlier tonight, I actually collected my energy and I actually got one more energy than I would normally get. It happened yesterday too. I got a pumpkin juice and instead of three, I got four. So this proficiency is going to continue to up how much energy you can get from a single inn from whichever food you're getting from that inn. And lastly for the inn charm, I'm on the level 36 node in Calamity Essentials 2. I moved all the way down there. The level 36 node, if you go down the left path, and I've put it on my screen right now, level 36 node is at the top. If you keep going down the left path, which unfortunately goes through a lot of things to unlock, at the very end there is a treasure chest with the up arrow, meaning it's something that you get from the treasure trunks, excuse me, treasure trunks. And this one is called knowledge transfer. It's the same thing that the trace boosted. This is for inns. This gives you the chance when you open a treasure trunk from family experience of getting an in spell charge back. The in field charm could potentially be recharged one, one slot from opening up a treasure trunk. Again though, the odds right now, people are saying one out of 50. It is a very low chance, but this is where it is. Before I go on any further, I just want to clarify that as I talk about the nodes I'm finding these on, I'm really just going to these nodes and just showing you one example. There are plenty of other places in the nodes that actually will let you do these things. Raise the proficiency, raise the efficacy, um, raise the maximum number you can do. I'm just showing you the symbology so that you're able to look through your skill trees and find these easier and understand what they mean, what you're getting for using those resources. Anyway, let's continue on. The last charm I want to go over is the greenhouse. Back over at Calamity Essentials 1, I'm on the level 11 node, and the level 11 node allows you to get the greenhouse charm, which is called uh, Kelescare. And I pronounce the C's like that only because in Latin, there is no soft C. So they base most of their things off of Latin. So I'm thinking that's how it's pronounced. Again, have no idea how this is pronounced, but that's what we're going to go with. You can see the first thing that it gives you is greenhouse charm efficacy. So again, what does the efficacy mean? It is talking about the ingredients that appear on the ground afterwards. So for me tonight, when I showed you me casting that greenhouse charm, I talked about getting one leaping toadstool, but I actually got two. One was underneath. So my efficacy is actually, I've gotten plus two. So I'm able to produce two of a thing. So anywhere on the tree, when you increase the efficacy, it means you're gonna get one more of that ingredient. When you back out of the greenhouse and you look on the ground, there should be one more of that ingredient for increasing your efficacy by one. Moving on to the level 14 node. It's the level 14 node, and then it's to the right and down. You're gonna, I see a square, and I not only do I see the square, um, and I'll click on it so you can see. The symbol for the greenhouse, you can see it's the silhouette of a greenhouse, and it also has the flag on top as if somebody had just used it on the main screen. So that's the symbology for this. And you can see it's got that other square inside with the up arrow, which even before I clicked on it, you already knew it was going to increase the number of times you could cast this spell. So instead of being able to only hold one charge, now you could hold two. Again, this takes restricted section books, which I don't have, but rules of green thumb, this is the way you would upgrade that. And there are other tiles like this in the skill trees. You can actually get it up to four, just like the other charms, and they're going to look like that. So whenever you see that square with the greenhouse and then the up arrow inside the white square, that's what that's going to upgrade. So easy to find. I'm now at Calamity Essentials 2, and I'm at the level 17 node, and I'm going to click on it. Perfectly planted. You can see that this, again, is one that you get from a level up. You don't have to pay resources. Just get to level 17, you get this. This is Greenhouse Charm Proficiency. Proficiency is plus one. What proficiency does for greenhouses is, again, has to do with being inside the greenhouse, when I received the ingredients tonight, the, I had the pink writing showing me I was getting more of the ingredients and spell energy than I normally would. This proficiency ups those levels. So if I was normally to get, say, two snowdrop from a greenhouse, 
if I have this proficiency plus one, I would get three snowdrop and I would get extra energy, one more energy than I should have. And as you increase your proficiency, you'll get more energy and more ingredients plus one, plus two, plus three, that kind of thing. And lastly, for the greenhouse charm, I'm on the level 40 node of a Calamity Essentials 2. If I go all the way to the bottom and all the way to the right, there's a treasure trunk out there and it's got the arrow coming out, which means it has something to do with when you're receiving treasure trunks, you're gonna upgrade something. And you might've guessed already, it's called green thumb. And this is the way you can potentially recharge your greenhouse charm. Those treasure trunks, if you have this unlocked, you have that small chance that it's going to give you a charge back. Now, if you look for this one, it's 407 field guides, but it's 252 ministry manuals, which is a, a pretty healthy chunk. Um, it is interesting that they decided to put, make greenhouses one of the more expensive things and further down. I would have actually thought it would have been the trace charm because I feel like it's a lot more powerful. I hope this has helped clarify for you what each charm does and when you cast that charm, kind of what should you be expecting, what should you wait for, what should you look for to make sure you collect, as well as understanding in the skill trees as you go through what each of the things means. To recap real quickly, efficacy, efficacy usually is going to mean more things on the ground, more things out on the map. For traces, it's the trace charm, it's going to mean more traces appear in front of you. For ingredients, for the greenhouse charm, it's going to mean more ingredients appear around. And for the ends, it's gonna mean more energy appears outside. Proficiency is going to have to do with more within. Within the inn, you're going to get more energy from the food. In the greenhouse, you're gonna get more ingredients and spell energy than you would have, plus one, plus two, plus three. That's proficiency. And for traces, it's more fragments and that the fragments currently are bugged so that the maximum anybody's getting is two, even if you should get more. So something they should fix soon enough though. Don't forget each day to use those field charms, especially if you're gonna walk that 0.25 kilometers, you're going to get them back anyway, so there's no reason not to use them. Use the trace charm on the highest threat foundable you can find. For the inn in the greenhouse, I don't think it's as essential to worry about what kind you're doing. Just use them so that when you get that 0.25 kilometers, you can get it back. Don't forget, you can actually get that 0.25 kilometers, just don't collect it until you've used the charms later. I know that was kind of a deep dive into this, and honestly, this is still a rough guide. Disclaimer that a lot of these things may change because they are still working out some bugs for these, but that should give you a rough idea of how to approach all of those field charms. I will be putting more videos out about the update that came out and other aspects of the game that maybe need a little more explaining, but we do have a wizarding weekend coming up. So tomorrow's video will actually be covering the tasks for that and kind of a mini guide on what to expect for the weekend. All that being said, I will see you guys tomorrow. Knox.